Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Recently I did a video on making a scratch stock, but then that begs the question, what is a scratch stock? A scratch stock is basically when a molding plane and a card scraper make a baby. It will create details very similar to a molding plane, but it won't cut them as deeply. It cuts very, very light, shallow passes like a card scraper. But a scratch stock doesn't have a sole, just like a card scraper doesn't have a sole. And so with a scratch stock, you can actually start it in the middle of a cut, as opposed to having to start it on the very end of the board or kind of dive in eventually. With this, you can do a stopped molding. So this one's set up to make a little beading cut. I can put it on here and I can actually work it down into the wood and have a start spot. So as long as I put those points at the same spot, I can start it at the same spot each time. And every pass, it goes a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And then after a few passes, you can get that really nice stopped bead. It doesn't go any farther and it just goes right to that point. Making beads really is one of the most common things for a scratch stock. It's what it does really well. Now, yes, you could always use a beading plane, but a scratch stock is good for making one bead. If you want to make multiples of them side by side, well, a beading plane is going to do it much faster because it can do multiples of them at one given time. But a scratch stock can go both directions. It's really quick and easy to set up. And if you just need one bead running along the edge, a scratch stock is really the way to go. When it comes to profiles, the sky really is the limit. You can make it just about any shape you want. Uh, this is the one I'm going to use more than anything else, but I've also done some really weird ones. And things like this with a big cutter on this, this takes a lot of time to scratch out. For bigger ones like this, generally you want to do a lot of carving first, and then you bring this in to clean it up and do the final pass and get yourself a really nice, clean, smooth, consistent shape. That's really one of the big downsides to a scratch stock is it won't take off a lot of material. You can't really make a deep big groove with it very quickly. It can do that, but it takes a lot of time because it takes off light shaving after light shaving. But if you're going to come in and just add a small detail, it works great. Or if you want a larger detail, you do the majority of it by freehand and kind of get it close and then you can come in with this. A scratch stock is really commonly used for Another great common use for a scratch stock is doing blood grooves on a cutting board. You can freehand the groove and get it close, and then you can come into this and just refine it and get that groove right down to where you want it. But one of the fun parts is the sky is the limit on what shape you can make. You're only limited by your imagination and the files you have on hand. One of the great uses of an old saw plate that has outlived its life for other things is you can turn it into card scrapers and scratch stock blades. With a pair of tin snips, you can roughly get it to where you want it to be. So usually I'm gonna cut a piece about a half inch wide, about an inch and a half long or so. And just like that, we have a blank that we can work with. For this one, I actually wanna make a blood groove cutter. So I have a vise that I've put into my vise. I'm gonna put it down on here, really clamp it down, and then we can file this to the shape we want. Make sure that it's really clamped in there, because we don't want it moving around, and go to town on the file. When I get it close to the shape I want, I want to grab a really fine file and just refine it down to the end shape that I want. This one is basically just a smooth round to cut in a little ways. If you want to make a beading tool, then you can use a rat tail and just cut down in until you get to the depth you want. Come in with a couple mill files and shape down the teeth on either side and you've got yourself a cutter. The nice thing is, when they get dull, they're really easy to sharpen. You don't have to bring a burnisher back in and burnish them like you would with a card scraper. For a scratch stock cutter, all you need is the same file you used to create it. You just cut it a little bit deeper. Just one more step deeper, just a couple shavings. And what that does is it actually forces a burr out on both sides and you have a cutter that's ready to go again. So every time you need to freshen up, just cut it a little bit deeper, kind of like a saw. So now let's actually go ahead and cut a blood groove in the edge of this board. I want to lay out where the sides of it are, so I'm actually going to use a pencil on a marking gauge. Uh, a pencil won't dig in and create a gullet on the side. So then I'm going to pick a gouge that is about the right radius I want, and I'm going to come through and start cutting it out. And all I'm going to do is make sure I'm staying away from those lines and get it down just about as deep as I can get it in between those lines. 
This may seem scary, but in all honesty, it's really not that much work and is surprisingly easy to do. The hard part is that final finish, getting that final stroke to be exactly what you want. And in that case, freehand carving is very difficult. But that's where the scratch stock comes in. So in this case, we've gotten this pretty close, but it's still really wobbly and not exactly what we want. So I can set up my scratch stock to fit right into that groove. The fence is where it needs to be. And I can push and pull to get it exactly where I want it to be. Just keep going back and forth on it until you're down to the depth of your arm. And just like that, we've got a really nice blood groove, nice and clean and straight. That's exactly what we want. Perfectly smooth, perfectly straight, and you don't have to worry about the freehand. You just get majority of it with that and then you come in with this and clean it out. If you're the type of woodworker where you like to add a lot of little beads and coves and details, you'd like them to be able to stop, um, but you don't want to get a whole bunch of these, a scratch stock is an amazing tool because you can make a profile for anything you want very, very quickly. And for small little details, it does amazing work. It just really does things that you, you can't find anywhere else. As well as the ability of being able to do a stopped detail and going to a specific point and stopping, I, that, you can't do that any other way. It's a really, really cool tool with a lot of little uses and they're relatively simple to make. This is one of the more complicated uh, versions of a scratch stock. There are simpler ways to make them, but this one gives you a lot of flexibility in moving things in and out. You could have a simple L-shaped piece of wood with a slot cut into it and a couple screws to hold it in place, and that's all you need. Or you could do something like this and put it on the back side of a marking gauge. You just need a fence that you can clamp down a little piece of cardstock in, and you've got yourself a scratch stock. It is a really, really cool tool that can do a lot of things very easily and just provide that surface that very few other things can make. Um, yeah, scratch stock. Really simple, really fun, and really cool. If you'd like to see how I made it, I've got a couple videos on making these, um, as well as an old video on how to make the cutter and a few other things on it. It's one of those tools that does come up quite a bit in the shop. So I hope you like this. If you have any questions, thoughts, things I could do better, things I should try, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I can get to. So thank you. Putting comments down below does actually help the channel. Thank you. That means a lot. As well as hitting the like, the share, subscribing. Those get us in front of more people. They help the channel to grow and it means a lot. Thank you for that. If you want to take it one step farther, there are a bunch of names that are scrolling over here on the side. They are the patrons on Patreon, as well as members here on the channel who've clicked the little join button down below. We are sponsored by you, the viewer. We are, com we are completely run by the income from the viewers. So thank you. That means more than I can say. I like being able to offer special perks to people who've been helping out with that. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's links to Patreon in the description down below, or you can click the little join button right here and become a member here on YouTube. And I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Finally was able to scratch the itch on making that video. Whew, glad that's over with.